Hello, I'm with Nirayal, the author of Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here. So tell me a little bit about the book. Sure. So uh, my book is really about how do products engage users? How do we build products and services to keep people coming back? Not every business needs to form a habit, but every business that forms a habit needs a hook. And so that's what the book is really about. It's about this pattern that I call the hook model, this four-step process of a trigger, action, reward, investment that keeps people coming back and using these various products and services. A and my hope here is that we can use the psychology of what makes products engaging to help people live happier, healthier, more productive, more connected lives by using habits for good. And now uh, I, as an entrepreneur, use this model? Right. So if you're building a product that requires a habit, so if you think about products, some of the most successful companies over the past several years, companies like Facebook and Google and Instagram and WhatsApp and Snapchat and Slack, these companies have all formed habits in users. Now that's not a requirement. Lots of businesses can do just fine without forming a habit. But if you're the type of company whose business model relies upon a habit, just like those companies I, I just mentioned, they would go out of business if they had to send advertising every time to bring people back. So if you're that kind of company, if you're an entrepreneur building a product that requires people to come back on their own, you can use this framework to figure out, hey, do I have the fundamental elements that I need to, form, uh, to, to build a habit-forming product? Is this only for uh, consumer products? No, so um, if whether it's enterprise products or consumer products, doesn't matter. What matters is, is the product something that people use throughout their day with little or no conscious thought? So if you're building an enterprise application that, you know, it might be some piece of software that's put into some server farm somewhere and nobody actually uses that piece of software, that's fine, that's a great business, you know, you should keep doing that, but you just don't need a habit for that because that's not used regularly. On the other hand, if you're building an enterprise product like a communication tool like Slack or uh, GitHub or Stack Overflow or Salesforce, all of these are enterprise-facing products that necessitate habits. They require people to come back on their own. And for those type of products, you need a hook. So these hooks, this four-step process, starts with a trigger to an action, then a reward, and then an investment. So every hook starts with a trigger. A trigger prompts the habit. And we have these two types of triggers, an external trigger or an internal trigger. External triggers are things in our environment that tell us what to do next. They give us some piece of information, click here, buy now, uh, a friend telling you about this great new app through word of mouth, all examples of external triggers. These external triggers prompt us to action. That's the habit itself. Open an app, scroll through Pinterest, uh, search on Google, push the play button on YouTube. These are these actions that we do with little or no conscious thought that are these very simple behaviors, these very small behaviors that, that we do seeking a reward. Which brings me to the third step of the hook, the reward phase, is where the user's itch is scratched, where they get what they came for, and yet there's a bit of mystery around what they might find next time they engage with the product. So it's not just a reward. It turns out that habit-forming technologies integrate what's called a variable reward. So this comes from the classic work of B.F. Skinner, the father of operant conditioning. Skinner found that when he gave rewards to his pigeons in these little boxes on a variable basis, so sometimes the pigeons would peck at the disc, they wouldn't receive right. a reward. The next time they would receive a reward, what Skinner observed was that the rate of response, the number of times these pigeons pecked at the disc, increased when the reward was given on an intermittent schedule of reinforcement. And so in all sorts of products that we find most habit forming, most engaging, we find this bit of mystery, this bit of variability. So searching and scrolling and scrolling on a news feed uh, or, or what makes sports fun to watch is the uncertainty of will, will, will uh, our team win the game or what makes for a great TV show or movie, right? The, the, the uncertainty about how the happy ending is going to unwind. All the, these are examples of variable rewards. And finally, the uh, investment phase, the last step of the hook. The investment phase is where the user is prompted to put something into the product, to invest in the product in anticipation of a future benefit. So the purpose of investments is to increase the likelihood of the next pass. That's what the investment phase is for. And it does this in two ways. The investments load the next trigger. So loading the next trigger, an example of that would be when I send someone a message on WhatsApp, I don't get any immediate rewards, right? There's no, uh, there's no leaderboards, there's no badges, there's no points, nothing really happens. What I'm doing is I'm loading the next trigger because I'm likely to get a reply. Right. 
And that reply comes coupled with an external trigger. Hey, here's a message from your friend, which prompts me to use the hook once again. The second way that investments increase the likelihood of the next pass is by storing value, and this is a big deal. Storing value is when the product gets better and better with use. It appreciates in value, and it does this by storing data, followers, reputation, Photos. content, right? Anything that I'm putting into the app uh, that gets better and better over time. And so it's through successive cycles through these hooks, trigger, action, reward, investment, that now an association is built with that second type of, of trigger. Remember I told you there was two types of triggers, external triggers and internal triggers? The internal trigger is the, are these things in our life that prompt us to action, like a place, a situation, a routine, a certain person, and most frequently emotions that prompt us to do this next action, this next habit, with little or no conscious thought, but without any explicit information. So over time, through successive cycles, through these hooks, now we use the product, not with a message that tells us, hey, click here, but with a need. With a need, exactly. We internally trigger ourselves. We have these associations. So I'm lonely, I check Facebook. Uh, I'm uncertain, I Google. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, bored and I'm on YouTube or Reddit or checking stock prices or sports scores, right? We do these things instantaneously because of these success successive cycles through these hooks.